PCN is brought to you in part by the following underwriters. Welcome to PAC TV Community News, local stories from the South Shore. This week we take you to a beach cleanup in Duxbury and we hear about the new proposal for an upgraded Kingston Library. PCN meets a star as he coaches a master class with Break a Leg Theatre and we check out area teamsters and sheriff departments as the trucks drove away with donations for hurricane relief. We meet the new Plymouth County entomologist who's here to help communities deal with Lyme disease. PCN heads to Norwell as we meet the folks behind the Cancer Support Community Organization and Town Talk brings Plymouth's DPW Director of Public Works to the set. But we begin tonight in Plymouth. Donations to those affected by Hurricane Irma were collected from employees and community members of Plymouth, Barnstable and Norfolk counties under the direction of Plymouth County Sheriff Joe McDonald. The collections were then packed up, loaded onto trucks, and driven down to Florida by drivers from local Teamsters 25 and Joint Council 10. PCN was there when the trucks took off for Florida. After Hurricane Irma hit Florida, acting president of the Massachusetts Sheriff's Association, Joe McDonald, received a phone call from the Florida Sheriff's Association asking for help. Our executive director, Jim Walsh, uh, put word out to all the sheriffs to find out you know, who could uh, uh, participate in, uh, you know, how we could be helpful. And what was determined was that we would team up uh, with the Teamsters. They volunteered the trailers, uh, the tractors, and they're actually going to drive them down there. But what we've done at 10 of the 14 sheriff's offices, the ones that could do it, we have all been gathering uh, supplies, non-perishable food items, new clothing items, uh, a lot of cleaning supplies, a lot of pet supplies, things that you you know, you don't necessarily think about that are very, very useful and necessary after this type of uh, devastating event uh, such as a hurricane. So we have spent the last couple of weeks gathering those items and we have uh, filled two tractor trailers with those items. Many of our inmates uh, that are qualified to come out and do this type of work have been helpful as well. So this has been uh, really everybody pitching in. It's been our local businesses, uh, it's been our staff members, community uh, activists, and, and just regular folks within the community. The local Teamsters who regularly get involved in community service projects sent four trucks packed with supplies to Texas after Hurricane Harvey hit. Sean O'Brien, the president of Local 25, said it just made sense to team up with local sheriffs to help out in Florida. We've got uh, four of our drivers that are going to run straight through uh, to Florida to make certain that we get these uh, products delivered in a timely manner. Most of, mostly all the stuff has been donated. Uh, you see the sign out here that says, you know, donations welcome. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, partnerships with companies that we represent. Uh, the Sheriff's Department has done a great job collecting uh, goods and services. We left the trailers here uh, over the last several weeks so that they could be loaded. And uh, it's just been a group effort between the business community, between just regular folks in the community, and also uh, uh, many unions that have been involved. But more importantly, the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department has done a ph phenomenal job in just getting the word out and raising, raising money, awareness, and also uh, grabbing products uh, to make certain that those folks that are in need get what they, get what they need and deserve. Uh, there's no better uh, project to be involved than in when people are, are down and out. It's similar to what we do every day in the workplace. We make sure that we protect our workers, but we also want to make sure that we protect and provide services for the communities that, that we live in. And, and also, uh, I mean, it's teamwork. It's, you know, Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, Teamsters in Monroe County. It's a great partnership, and uh, uh, it's going to be a great, great, great uh, day when this stuff arrives. The Barnstable County Sheriff said his department organized a team effort to collect goods with local police departments on the Cape. As we reached out to our local police departments and uh, got eight of our local departments to be drop-off points, and uh, then we went to our local media and Facebook, uh, social media, all of that good stuff, and put the word out there, and uh, Friday we picked up uh, the, the, the donations that we had received and uh, brought them up here to Plymouth. The Norfolk County Sheriff was also happy to get his staff on board to gather supplies in their part of the state. 
We did a small piece out of the Dedham Jail and we uh, collected stuff uh, primarily through staff and friends and family of staff. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we did our piece and we brought it up here. We loaded our, one of our bigger trucks, which is not an 18 wheeler, and we loaded one of the two, you know, we probably filled about a, a quarter of one of the two 18 wheelers. If we all do a little bit, it has to make a difference. And it has to make a, a difference in terms of uh, morale down there. Reporting in Plymouth for PCN, I'm Walter Chiquetti. Preliminary plans for a new Kingston library were recently presented. Before the plan goes any further, Kingston Town Meeting members must vote to approve the funding. PCN was there for a public meeting to learn more about this project. We've been aware in the library that we had a space problem. Um, we probably started really focusing on it in about 2010 and documenting what the issues were and trying to find solutions. Um, and sometime around then I heard that there was a state grant being offered, um, but we were not ready to apply for that grant. Um, but we watched for another opportunity and that's what this project is all about. There is, uh, first we applied for a planning and design grant from the state, which we got, and that's what funded us, along with some town funding and funding from the Library Foundation, that's what allowed us to develop the proposal that we submitted in January for a construction grant. Our biggest problems with this building are just lack of space, but we also have safety problems and accessibility problems. The new library will, will not have any of those issues. It, the, there will be adequate space, not only for the current collections, but also for the growth that we anticipate. Um, beyond that, though, it will be, there will be spaces where we can do things like maker activities and distance learning and uh, more programming than we can do now. Also, there's a huge need for quiet study space and conference space and small meeting space and small program space, collaborative projects. We don't have really anything, any room for that now, and so that's something I think is a big need in the community, and that's one of the things that the new library will offer. But I'll also say it's going to be a much more energy efficient building so I think that um, although it will be larger, it will, make, uh, um, it will save the town money uh, in terms of what the town has to spend on maintenance and utilities. So it will, we're, we're planning for it to be probably LEED Silver eligible. Um, that's our hope. And LEED, if people don't know it, is, a, is an efficiency rating for buildings. If the project is approved at town meeting by a two-thirds vote, then it goes to a ballot vote in December, December 5th. Um, if it's approved at the ballot, then we kick right into gear. Um, we do everything we need to do to be ready to sign a contract with the state. Uh, as soon as we signed a, a contract with the state, they disperse the first payment of the grant, and then we start right away with uh, working on, working towards design development, which would take about a year and then about two months more for construction bidding, and then about a year and a half when we would have to move out of this building into temporary quarters during construction. The library is, and we always have been, a community gathering place. Um, we do that with some degree of success now. I think we can do a much better job of that and be a much more welcoming and useful place for the community. Lots of volunteers gathered at Duxbury Beach for the Coast Sweep cleanup to collect marine debris and unwanted items on the beach. PCN stopped off at the beach to bring you this story. So today we're here for the, uh, the Coast Sweep beach cleanup at Duxbury Beach. Um, we have a lot of volunteers here um, collecting all marine debris uh, from the bay side and the beach side. Um, they're um, tracking their findings. Um, so at the end, everybody will hand in their, their tracking sheet and we'll send all that information to the state and then it gets 
put into the uh, the coast sweep uh, numbers for for this year's coast uh, coast sweep cleanup. Personally, um, I know I'm no I know I'm not the only one, but this is my happy place, uh, and it really hurts to see it in this condition. You know, you walk down the beach and you see bags, bottles, balloons, uh, all sorts of fishing line. Um, it shouldn't be here. So. The goal is to get it off the beach. We have people from the uh, Duxbury Beach Reservation. We have a lot of the trustees here. We have people from town, friends, um, people from other towns. Uh, there are a lot of people here that are very passionate about keeping the beach clean, um, and they're doing a great job. We have a lot of really enthusiastic volunteers here today. So this event has um, gone on, I think, for over 20 years in Duxbury. I think in the mid-'80s, uh, the Coast Sweep started. Uh, it was run by a uh, company that was in town for a long time. Um, and a couple years ago, I just happened to go sign up for the cleanup. I noticed nobody was um, running it that year, so I just um, offered to, to keep it going. So this is my second year coordinating this, and um, yeah, it's, we're keeping it going. I would say, <laughs> whatever you take onto the beach, you need to take off the beach. This is such a beautiful, stretch of land, not just Duxbury Beach, but all along the coast of Massachusetts and all over the world. So, you know, if it's if it's man-made, you see it, pick it up. If you bring it onto the beach, you gotta take it off the beach. I would just like to thank all the volunteers for being here today. It's such a great success. Um, you know, I wanna say we have double the volunteers than we did last year, uh, and then we'll hopefully keep that momentum going into uh, next year's cleanup. Plymouth County ranks third in the state in terms of the number of cases of Lyme disease each year. To combat the problem, the county has hired an entomologist who studies bugs like ticks. PCN's dropped by to learn more. We were approached by a group of people who, were, who had been affected by Lyme disease and by tick-borne illnesses, um, and they were uh, people who are selectmen and have other positions in other communities and they were looking to have Plymouth County be part of the solution to this growing problem. Bringing an entomologist in was one small step to growing our program. In our research and developing this position and working closely with folks at Barnesville County and at the state level, it was apparent that Plymouth County is at a very high risk for tick-borne illnesses, specifically Lyme disease, and that it's becoming a public health problem. Um, in this area and through education uh, and just outreach to people in the community, places like Barnesville County with a position like this already have seen their numbers decrease. So again, we're hoping to replicate that in Plymouth. We did a search for our entomologist position. We were lucky enough to hire Blake. I think his background um, and knowledge is gonna be a great resource here in Plymouth County. We already have a wide network of folks that we're collaborating with to make sure that um, everybody is included in this conversation and to make sure that Blake hits all 27 towns in Plymouth County. It's a large county, but I think that you know, he's uh, ready to go, ready to make sure that everybody's included and that folks get the information they need. As far as we know, this is the only other position of its type in the state of Massachusetts, aside from, uh, again, the Barnesville County program. We are very lucky to have it and have the support of the county commissioners to to bring on this resource and to bring Blake into this position. So my job entails uh, pretty much educating anyone on anything from ants to yellow jackets, essentially. Um, but my primary focus for the time being is on ticks. Ticks are active all year round. And a lot of times people like to think that just because we have a harsh winter, which I hear people are saying we're going to have this year, um, that 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 hard freeze is what gets rid of ticks, but that's actually not the case. They have it, uh, the, the black-legged tick or deer tick has a two-year life cycle, and so it does survive the winters. But when it comes to Lyme disease, any of those tick-borne diseases, uh, we really are at, at a hotbed for that kind of activity. And the incidence rate for all of Plymouth County is, is third in Massachusetts, and it's actually over 100 times greater than the national average, which the national average is about eight. So uh, what we're seeing is uh, that this area right here is, it really is a public health crisis. In addition to just me going out there and delivering information, is we have several other resources available. Um, we've got tick cards, which is essentially a piece of cardboard that people can take home and read on their own time. Um, we're developing a website 
that people will be able to access online. In addition to that, we have a bunch of different websites that people can view that are already well established. We also have recommendations for tick testing services where people can go ahead and, you know, if they remove a tick, submit that tick and get that tested to see exactly what's inside, inside of it. They'll know um, what type of tick it is, how long it's been feeding, and have they been exposed to that type of disease that they're concerned about. And they can actually use that um, when they visit their doctor. So uh, this service is free um, to anyone that needs it. Um, as frequently as people need it, um, I'm available, I'm around. Um, you can contact me at my email address or, through, or via phone. I don't mind either way. Cancer Support Community Massachusetts South Shore is one of over 50 cancer support communities throughout the United States and internationally. The CSC MSS is a division of the Norwell Visiting Nurse Association Foundation. We drop by their offices in Norwell to learn about this caregiving facility. We want to enhance people's quality of life here, and we do that by creating a community of support, and that's why it's Cancer Support Community. Um, and we do that through weekly participant support groups. We have many. We have ones for people with all sorts of cancers, all stages. We also have group uh, cancer-specific and we, we have caregivers group, we have yoga, tai chi, healthy lifestyle, we teach meditation and mindfulness and nutrition and um, pretty much try to fill people back up again so that they can navigate this journey and they don't feel alone. It's in our mission that we have a home-like environment. People uh, historically do not um, often want to go where they get treatment for support. Um, I know myself, I would pull up to the hospital and I would immediately feel nauseous after weeks and weeks and weeks of that. Here they pull up and it's comfort and it's cozy and they can sit around in the living area and have a, a cup of tea after group and just talk some more. So um, we purposely make it very home-like, very warm, welcoming. Anybody who works here needs to be kind and warm and welcoming. The Festival of Wreaths is our largest fundraiser of the year here at the Cancer Support Community. This year it's on December 1st at Granite Links in Quincy and it's a live and silent auction um, fundraiser and all of the money raised at the event goes directly to supporting our programs. Um, and a lot of people get involved in the event um, around the community. We have uh, local florists that donate wreaths. We have different garden clubs create wreaths for the event. Um, some of our support groups are even donating and creating wreaths for the event and um, they're really beautiful and a part of the auction and, and all the proceeds go to supporting programs at Cancer Support. I came to the cancer support community actually through my volunteering at the, the Festival of Rees and um, I became so dedicated to the cause and to supporting people here on the South Shore living with cancer that um, I wanted to see how I could e get even more involved. So um, that's really what, the cause is really what brought me to cancer support community. When I was diagnosed, I'm a survivor myself. I, even though I was in the medical community and very immersed in Western medical knowledge, I still knew I needed more than that. I needed the rest, the mind-body connection, the psychosocial. So I received some help at a place called Pathways Center for Cancer Support, very tiny little entity that we, we morphed from. And um, I have a son who is a cancer survivor. I'm just very familiar with this journey from many angles. And I think it is so important that people get what they need and they do not navigate it by themselves. Break a Leg Theater students got a unique opportunity when Derek Davis, the lead of the Phantom of the Opera, came to Plymouth to coach a master class. PCN stopped by to get some coaching ourselves. Well, we're here in Plymouth with Break a Leg Theater Works, and I'm so excited to get an opportunity to work with the young people of this city. Uh, 
they got a chance to come and see the Phantom of the Opera this past Saturday, a, a great number of them. And uh, we got a chance to kind of have a little bit of dialogue after the performance. And now I'm looking forward to hearing some of them sing and uh, coaching them through some ways to help them infuse emotion into their performances and fielding uh, a great number of questions, I'm hoping, uh, to give them some insight into the industry and what, it, what it's like to really be a performer. Well, uh, this is our fifth master class, our, uh, the fifth Broadway uh, star who's come up here, uh, the biggest, the Phantom of the Opera, Derek Davis. And uh, it's an opportunity for our students to get insight and feedback from working actors in the business. Um, I mean, it's wonderful as their teacher, Healy and I are able to give our feedback, but uh, we've now had the experience of having these wonderful stars come up on their time when they have time off and give back um, to the community and um, to give them insight. Uh, we went and had a field trip to the, see the Phantom of the Opera at the Boston Opera House. We're uh, establishing a relationship with Broadway in Boston. And um, then the kids had an exclusive talk back with Derek and members of the company. Madam Geary was there. Uh, and they were able to ask some questions right after the performance. But also uh, now they have this special day where uh, they auditioned and uh, 16 of them were selected to come in and uh, sing for Derek. And so today what happens is they get to sing their pieces and get insight and feedback on their vocal technique, as well as the storytelling of the song and the emotional journey and arc. You know, number one thing is getting feedback, feedback from Derek, you know, someone at his caliber, it's just amazing to hear all the experiences he's been through, you know, where, how, what he went through to get to where he is today and just, you know, getting to sing for him. That's, uh, that's the coolest part about it. Well, it's exciting because he, he gets to hear me sing and he gets to give all this awesome advice to me that I'm really looking forward to. This day is pretty nerve-wracking only because I love Phantom of the Opera, so I'm a little starstruck right now, but all of these master classes are um, opportunities that a lot of other kids don't have, so I try to take advantage of them without all the nerves. I think watching other people is the most beneficial thing for a performer because, especially in a master class, you can see how his um, critiques and corrections impact the way that they perform and make them better performers because of it. Town Talk today welcomes the Director of Public Works for the Town of Plymouth, Jonathan Beter. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So Director of Public Works, uh, what exactly does that do? Oh, it does a lot. Okay. It does a lot in Plymouth. What we are you have in a, charge of? You know, we have multi-disciplines. Yeah. Uh, we have water, sewer, highway, yeah. uh, engineering, building maintenance, fleet maintenance, uh, parks, cemeteries. Um, so we have kind of a whole slew of things. Wow. Uh, big organization. We have over 100 people. Um, so we stay pretty busy. Yeah. Stay pretty busy. I would think so. And you've been in this trade, in this business for how long? Um, in, the, in this trade for 20 plus years. Yep. Um, I started as an engineer in the town of Stoughton. I came to Plymouth in, in, in early spring of 2011. Okay. So it's six been and a half years. Bit. Six and a half years. Go team. Yes. And every day is great. And every day is different. Every day is absolutely different. Okay. So what are the biggest initiatives that you're working on in Plymouth? So, so right now, kind of DPW is in winter mode. So we're trying to get right. ready for the winter, you know, salt, plows. We try to kind of slow things down in terms mm -hmm. of our, our construction season, mm -hmm. uh, which really starts in early spring. So like March, April till, till, till right about now. Yeah. Uh, we have a number of projects going on, uh, a lot of water work, uh, yep. sewer work especially. We did a lot of paving this year, a lot of drainage. Uh, a lot of project reviews because uh, there is a lot happening in town. But in terms of, let, I'll start with the sewer project. Okay. I know a, a lot of uh, your viewers here. Uh, We've heard about that for a long attention. time. We've been doing updates. Yeah, that, you know, we had the sewer break back in December of 2015. Right. So it's been a long, a long project. Uh, we are happy to say that we have about a, about a week left. Probably really? about 10 days before that second, the redundant pipe is, is complete, all done. Okay. tested, um, and then crews will be cleaning up. We're on Alden and Westerly uh, Street now. Excellent. Uh, we plan on having those paved before the winter, which great. will be great. Ugh. I know the residents have been through a lot. Right. Um, but that, that project is wrapping up. Great. Uh, and we will be back in the spring to finish pave and do a lot of the restoration. But again, you know, both pipes are in the ground, mm -hmm. tested, and, mm -hmm. and, and we're very pleased with right. that. Right. And that's something that you didn't think was going to happen. That was, oh, not, no. a, that was no. not an expected project. No, not right. in the least. Yeah. Totally unforeseen. Right. Uh, great response. Yeah. Uh, very pleased. Can't be thankful enough to all the people that provided support to us on, on that front. But it right. is almost complete. Excellent. Uh, water main. Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Water main. Uh, we are completing 
got a water main on Taylor Ave. Okay. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, Taylor Ave is going to be reconstructed mm -hmm. through the state, through uh, MassDOT. Uh, that project is out to bid. We expect to have bids in January, mm -hmm. and then we'll probably have a pre-construction meeting sometime after that. We'll let our board of selectmen and the manager's offers know when that is, so we can get that information out there. Okay. But that should start in the spring. Okay. Uh, that project, and that's going to be that's going to rebuild that? Taylor Ave. Probably right. about two years. Two years. Okay. There are summer restrictions where the contractor won't be able to work, but it's new new bridge. Right. Uh, new drainage, new sidewalks. It's going to be beautiful. But great. Our, our contractor has finished the water main. That'll be complete as of today. Ooh. And the contractor is going to relocate. We had you in at a good time. Yeah, perfect timing. Finish, finish, perfect finish. Perfect timing. <laughs> so that contractor is going to relocate to town, um, towns in South Street uh -huh. and start there. Uh, probably tomorrow the weather's not supposed to be so that no, great. No rain. But Lots probably of rain. start Thursday, and okay. that's new 16-inch water main on right. towns in Stafford Street. Excellent. That'll probably take a couple of weeks, and we'll be done in December. All right. Um, you have a lot of items up for review from the zoning board. Can you talk about those? Yeah, a lot of projects actually happening now okay. and into the future. Um, we have the Global Gas Station. Yeah. We have Home Depot Drive. We have the Hotel on Commerce. We have the, the Park and Ride yeah. on, on Commerce Way. So those are some pretty big projects, um, commercial you know, um, type projects, mm -hmm. you know, box retail, mm -hmm. um, the hotel. So it keeps DPW pretty busy. We have an engineering department that kind of does those reviews. Right. And then we do construction inspection for water and sewer. Yep. Anything that's on town property or may impact town property, we review, especially traffic. Right. You know, traffic. Um, now, that's, 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 a, that's a sore spot with a lot of people. Talk um, about that. Well, traffic is very detailed. Yes. You know, because you have a multitude of, of impacts mm -hmm. and people don't want what's called the level of service. Right. affected and that's really that your the your delay and the impacts in terms of crash or safety right so we try to improve those so we try to work with the developers to, to make those intersections better than they are today yeah and that just takes time right so it's it's a very cumbersome process very detailed process mm -hmm. generally you know you have the zoning board or the planning board and you have dpw we bring in a third party reviewer just to make sure that things are, are going to work when they're when they're done because mm -hmm. that's that's important to us right now everything that you do in in your department of public works does that have to be approved by the zoning board or who who has a final say on all your well, projects well the the, the independent projects, you know, the DPW is involved because of, of town infrastructure, town Stuff roads. We kind of oversee yep. that. Mm -hmm. But the planning board right. and the zoning board work independently of DPW. Okay. We're kind of we work kind of work in parallel to them. All right. Especially once it becomes you know, once it affects town property. Gotcha. Okay. Wow, you, we had a lot in in that five minutes. A lot. Are we done? Yeah. Yeah, we're done. We're oh, five we didn't even minutes. get to talk Wait. about paving. Paving quick. Paving. paving we, we did a lot of paving this year. Yeah. Uh, we paved Bourne Road, Industrial Park, um, long Ellisville, stretches. long stretches. Yeah. You know, town meeting appropriated funding last year for that type yeah. of work. So we're really gearing up to get as much of that done as we can Good. in two years. For 2020? All for 2020. Oh, we got a lot it, of people uh, coming in. A, lo a lot of it needs to be done anyways. Exactly. All right. Thank you. We will have you back again. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you want to see the show again, you can check out our website, and PCN is also on YouTube. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook to get up-to-date information. Stay tuned as a brand new life is up next.